this is great. Trejo's donuts, <laughs> although it very well could be. Oh, did we start? We started already? I start recording. Oh, sweet. Right when you walk in, so it really just like throws you off. Did you get the hug? And yeah, the, oh yeah, oh, it makes you very amazing. uncomfortable. <laughs> Surveillance cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I like to really throw you off, like make you uncomfortable, not warm and it. welcoming whatsoever. But you brought donuts. I did. You know, um, that's one of my weaknesses, and uh, this is the other coffee, and so I was like, I can't show up with What's- sugar on my lips without giving you donuts. No, so now I have sugar on my lips. Uh, margarita donut, <gasps> pineapple apple fritter. Oh shit. Uh, horacha. Oh, wow. Or is that coffee beans? I don't know. But I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, What's that one? One, two, three, four, f- five. Can you eat five donuts? Dude, no. I need your help. <laughs> Will I, you please? I've already had mine. Okay, well, what, yeah. I'm going to eat whatever one this one is. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know what that is. Make sure I get the ASMR. It's so LA. Oh, yeah. Do the uh- <laughs> mm, This is just like brown sugar. It's just delightful. Trejo's is great. God. Um, <laughs> I can only have one now. I used to be able to inhale like six. But that, I always talk about that with pizza. At some point in my life, yeah. pizza became more than two slices. Yes. Like I can't sit and have like a slice of pizza. Right. It's four. Well, probably in your 20s. Mm-hmm, when you could do that. I'm 46. I'm older than you. So now I could only God have. Asian skin. You look so good. Okay, I'm 46. <laughs> and um, I could only have about one donut and then I start feeling sick. Really? Yeah. It's, it's just our bodies slowly um, dying. I like to call it growth. Sure. Yes. Or our inevitable death. I like the positive <laughs> psychology spin on it. Okay, then I should introduce you. <laughs> Welcome, confidants, to a glorious, glorious. I uh, was listening to some Kanye earlier, and so now I'm in the um, choir mm. uh, mood. Another glorious episode of Confidently Insecure, the podcast where we are absolutely sure we don't know everything. And our guest this week is a licensed, okay, so it's a professional. We brought a professional this week. Uh, a licensed, is it MFT, LMFT, yeah, it's, LMAO, so the, it's, LOL? It's, it's, L, it's LOL, which because my <laughs> license is a joke. No, uh, It's LMFT, licensed marriage, marriage family, family therapist. therapist. Yeah, You're a first therapist on a podcast oh, where really? I'm basically therapizing every week. <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't know that. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, this is John Kim. You are not only an LMFAO, uh, you are also <laughs> a author of a book called, well, a few books called I Used to Be a Miserable Fuck. Yes. Which I love. Thank you. I had a lot of trouble with the title, a lot of resistance. So my mm. publishers, uh, Harper One, they wanted to call it that. Ooh, bragging. And uh, <laughs> and um, I was like, no, we're not going to call it that. I didn't mm. want to jump on the fuck train. Mm. There's a lot of wellness books with the word fuck in it. Mm. And I was like, mm. ah, I don't know. And then she said, it's in the first paragraph. You should yeah. put it in there. And I sat with it. And I was like, why do I not want this to be the title? And mm. deeper, I realized it's because I was embarrassed well, mm. that a therapist was miserable. I was embarrassed that I was announcing that I was unhappy. And you also have the nickname, The Angry Therapist. Yes. But spoiler alert, I've been with you for like five minutes. You're not very angry. I used to be. Mm. Yeah. And so, first of all... Um, from, it's their tied from being unhappy. Miserable. Unhappy yeah, yeah, yeah. and then too relatable. Um, I have a book coming out next year called Don't Fucking Panic. Oh, Awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> when I heard you talking that about- That gives me anxiety. Yeah. The title alone yeah. makes me panic. Well, it's uh, <laughs> don't fucking panic or do it's up to you. Uh, it's all about like panic disorder and anxiety and, and depression. But when you were talking about not having fuck in the title, I went through the exact same thing. Oh, like, people are going to judge you on it. Yeah, not only that, but it does seem a little bit trendy to have a cuss word in your title like you are a badass yes. or um you know yes. but i used to be a miserable fuck you're really taking it on you're you're making yourself uh, i think that was her argument is like yeah. it's used in a different way yeah and there's ownership with this yeah and it's very personal yeah which is different than just saying like you what know. i'm doing <laughs> no no that's not true that's not true <laughs> no, um, no i i've kind of owned it it's definitely part of my brand like the cussing and the intensity. Right, right. Um, well, but that's why you have so many uh, followers and listeners and all that. I think because if you weren't transparent, people mm, wouldn't. Well, so, so what I say bounces off of me and reflects right back sure. onto you, sir. <laughs> sure. Because why don't you tell our listeners who are 
spoiler alert, mostly women, mostly mm. age 15 to 30. Okay. So we skew a little bit young here, but we're wise. We're old. We're grown. Oh, yeah. We're, we're a little woke over here. I say that unironically <laughs> as a white lady in Los Angeles. Um, but why don't you tell us your story a little bit about how you got dubbed the angry therapist? Yes. Can I just insert that I am deathly allergic to cats and I didn't know that she had cats? No, this just makes it more interesting. And she, she offered me Benadryl and I said no. Which is ballsy. Because I want to make it exciting. So now there's a ticking clock. So I have you about might die. I have about 40. So I want to see the color change in my face. John. I want to lose my vision. Yeah. Like if we're going to go there, Nose let's go there. Nose gone. See you later. Yeah, yeah. I don't want Benadryl. I have um, an EpiPen in case you go into anaphylactic shock. Perfect. That's all we need. Okay, good. That's all we need. This is going to be um, exciting. This is going to be like Pulp Fiction by minute 30. I'm just <laughs> yeah, stabbing exactly. you in the chest. Yeah, yeah I, I'm so right. sorry. I usually put that in the email. Like, by the way, if your client's allergic, I have two cats. I forgot. I didn't even think you. about it. Yeah. I was rushing because I changed yeah. the time on you. You're very flexible. Thank you so much. But it's my fault. No, it's all good. The universe I, brought us here. So. I think it was meant. Yeah, it was yeah, meant absolutely. to be. We'll see. It's going to make things <laughs> exciting. Um, so 10 years ago, I went through a divorce mm. and uh, left with... Um, nothing, uh, just a pillow in my car. Oh my God. It was what? a tempur pillow. That's, oh, well. She got the bed. Rich, rich. Yeah, rich, rich. <laughs> um, and I really, I had to start all over and I, I don't, I'm not saying this cause I know a lot of people, oh, I had to start, like I literally had no friends, mm. um, switched careers. I was your just identity becoming a therapist. revolved around your partner. Yes. Mm. Yes. Um, and, uh, put her on a pedestal. Mm. The relationship was very lopsided. I just mm. kind of lost myself, had no sense of self. Mm. And, um, I, uh, my, my parents wanted to give me their forerunner because that's what Korean parents do. Mm. They want to just buy you things. And I was like, I don't need a car. I need a hug. And, and they're uh, like, well, what's a hug? What's a hug? <laughs> yeah, here's cash. Yeah. Um, but my mom bought me a little white MacBook. Remember mm. those little? Oh, yeah. And then on that, I decided uh, I had so much time on my hands. I was like, okay, I'm just going to create a blog. Tum Tumblr I? was big. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I just called it the anger therapist and I just wow. started documenting. So I didn't mean for anyone to see it. Mm. It was just a personal diary. Mm, mm, mm. And so it started, I started documenting from my broken heart to wow. um, finding CrossFit and buying a motorcycle and wow. tattoos and stuff. I, I, I have so many questions about all of the things you just said. Yeah. Uh, you decided as a therapist getting your license to be transparent about your own feelings. Yes. So this was not on what? purpose. Right. I know. <laughs> and I think this is what's interesting because I didn't, it wasn't like some master plan. Like I, I didn't go into like, I didn't hire a, a brand right. person or strategist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wasn't even on social media. I was just in a dark place. Mm. And I think what people uh, found interesting about my blog was like, oh, here's a therapist pulling the curtain back and mm. saying that he's in pain and hurting and mm. not perfect. That and you're human. Yeah, and I think so. I think kind of like I humanized myself on accident without without knowing mm. it. And then I think that's what made it kind of interesting. Yeah, it made Because it, if I wasn't a therapist, I don't think anyone would have read it. Well, no, that's, it's a good point because yeah. uh, I am a huge proponent of therapy. I Like I said, mm. like I can't talk about it enough. At one point I had four therapists. I was in rehab for a while. Mm. I am sponsored by a, a therapy app like i am very oh, nice. pro there i'm like i love it yeah uh, i think everyone should be in therapy 100 there's fuck too who much stigma behind therapy totally and i think we'll get to that but yes. my point being is i've seen so many therapists and i've never not until my most recent therapist did i feel like they were also a person where yes so it's changing now i wonder yeah. if that has to do with it the, the the temperature and culture of self-betterment but yeah in therapy school we're taught to be very neutral and mm. if you were to you know if I was your therapist and you were like, you asked me a personal question, instead of answering it, I would just be like, I wonder where that's coming from. Yeah. You know, so you put I it would, back on me. Yes. It's all about me, which I normally love. But after a point, you're like, <laughs> right. does this person have a fucking right, soul? Exactly. Like, are you gay? Are you straight? Do you have a dog? Exactly. Like, where does your life experience come from that will give you any yes. uh, validity to giving me life experience? It, and it, sorry, I'm going to keep doing this. It produces glue. I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me? You can't hear me. Um, I think that produces glue, transparency, mm. vulnerability. So, was this scary for you or were you really like, you know what? I'm not a world renowned like Tony Robbins. I got nothing to lose. Fuck yes. it. And you weren't expecting people to be like, oh my God, a therapist that's a person who's angry. Yeah. And so I think it would have been harder. Fucked up. It would have been more difficult if I had already been an author and all of that, of course, mm -hmm. right? But when you. Yeah, no they'd one be like, knows he's you. having a breakdown. <laughs> right. Um, no, one know, no one knew me. I didn't know anyone. So it wasn't 
difficult because I had nothing to lose. Yeah. So I, was just, I was just fucking around on Tumblr. So I want to like stereotype you a little bit because Korean culture, like we mentioned, yes. like there's not really a lot of talk about feelings no. and especially no. a man. Uh, and especially you mentioned you're 45, like this 46. was, Oh, well, I was being nice. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I think age is a privilege. Uh, I'm <laughs> so jealous how old you are. I can't wait to turn 30 next year, but I think you, uh, I've listened to your backstory, so I'm not just like assuming, but mm -hmm. you grew up in a, in a culture that was kind of, uh, frowned upon with feelings, with sharing your feelings and being true to yeah, who you are. Yeah, I think um, um, Asian culture in general, but specifically Korean, because I don't mm. want to speak for everyone, but uh, um, lots of machismo, mm -hmm. lots of um, man being um, kind of stoic, uh, you know, you don't talk about feelings, you go Head get things done. Head, yeah, all of that mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, so I didn't, yeah, I didn't, growing up, I had no model of what it would look like to actually express my feelings. Like so, a, um, the make of the man, the mold you had come to know, and you were kind of rebelling against that. Uh, yes, because I had, because I was, I was in my, my rock bottom and I had nothing left but feelings. So oh, I was like, oh, fuck. well, this is, I have nothing else to show but my feelings. You were like, I can't help it. I can't, yeah, I couldn't I help it. Left. It was like either I talk about my feelings or I stay miserable, <laughs> you know? Um, but uh, I, I think I think that's a problem. I think mm -hmm. that uh, I think it's changing now, but I, I think there's slowly. a lot slowly. And mm -hmm. I think um, it's not just Asian, but just generationally. Yeah, um, it's a really rich time to kind of redefine um, what a man looks like, mm. uh, especially because of locker rooms. Yeah. And Look it doesn't president. matter. Yeah. It's, 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 every, it's all the way that down. Um, this idea that showing yourself and being vulnerable and talking about your feelings is actually mm -hmm. a strength, not a weakness. And I, I think that you, again, like I keep saying, I think you were really taking a chance by showing your your truth back when you yeah. did it because it was so radical to do so. When you started to gain success of showing your flaws, how were you able to A, stay a respectable therapist? Yeah, so I, <laughs> I started, so that was the thing. It wasn't so much that I had like a like following or anything like that, mm. but it was like, how would I be perceived in my therapy community? Right. And so I, well, my, my therapist journey, um, and this is something that no one talks about, uh, was very lonely, mm. very expensive. Ooh. And I have a problem with the system in that they the board puts a lot of shoulds on you. So Ooh. after becoming a therapist, uh, one of the things you can't do is use the internet to see clients unless they're in your own state. Really? Yes. And so the webcam had just, just come out and people were using the internet. And I was like, why can't we use technology to help people around the world? Around the world. So I called myself a coach. So mm. that way I could hop the fence. Got it. Um, started my own online school called Journey Coaching. Right. And we started training people to work in, in a way that's honest to them. And they're not therapists. They're mm -hmm. coaches. So I want to just say we're not, sure. I'm not trying to, um, I'm not trying to say that we're, I'm training therapists. But, no, but yeah, I think um, we live in a world where now you can help ways in, even like with your book mm -hmm. or the stuff that you do, there are ways that you are a catalyst to other people totally. um, that can be creative yeah. and that can be honest. And yeah. it doesn't have to just be going into the therapy room with the silver mm -hmm. balls and the couch and, and, <laughs> Those and damn the wrinkle-free pants yeah. and you know, all of that stuff. So you, you just brought up something that I never thought about, which is the loneliness mm -hmm. of getting your license. Can yes. you speak a little bit more about that? Oh, yeah. Um, so I have a lot to say about this. <laughs> um, it Okay, so you have to get your master's, yeah. which is great, and that was really fun. Uh, um, was it? <laughs> no, that was fun. It's, it was two years. Okay. I just love psychology. Okay. Okay. It was the first time in my life that I got straight A's, but I think mm. it's because I paid for it myself. Um, and then, no more pressure. Yeah, my SAT scores were low. I'm not an academic Same. person. Yeah, dropped out of three colleges. Oh, my SAT scores were so low. The vice president, uh, vice principal, called me down and said, "Is everything okay at home?" <gasps> and I was like, "If I wasn't Asian, would you be asking oh, me?" Oh man. Yeah, but anyway. Um, the, that experience was great, but they don't tell you you have to get 3,000 hours to become licensed. And that, 3,000? Yes, and so a lot That's of That's like a third of Malcolm Gladwell's rule. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. That's it's a, a lot. A little bit less than a third. Um, it's a <laughs> lot of hours. It's a lot of hours. And so what happens is it took me, I took a year break, but it took me six years. Holy shit. And in that six years, because you're not a licensed therapist yet, you don't get paid like what? you're working for like, you know, I worked in nonprofit for like wow. 30 grand a year. Wow. And then, so at, by the end of the six years, you start to get burnt out. Right. There's no self care. Uh, a lot of people start working in, um, 
uh, social workers on in the trenches, mm -hmm. really like low income areas. Right. And the passion that you had to help people going in slowly starts to. Yeah, and by you're not OK. <laughs> yeah. And so by the time you're licensed, you're like. I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. Yeah. How did you stay? Was it was it the, the blog, blog that a hundred percent? So if it wasn't for the internet and the blog that gave me a voice and a different way to help yeah. people, um, I would have quit. And it would have been just too much. And do you think that loneliness drove any of your anger in your your name, the ang angry therapist? Were you kind of over it, like sticking it to the man? Like I'm just gonna yes. talk about my shit <laughs> yes. because I. Uh, can't Absolutely. help it. Yeah. yeah, I kind of channeled my heartbreak uh, to the anger and then the anger at the system. And then, okay, fuck it. I'm just going to do my own thing, put on a yeah. cape and try to like, help people. And you know. paved a new way. Like, I don't think we're realizing, too, that like the internet was booming, but not in a way, n not like therapy. Like, therapy apps just became popular. Oh, last, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, like, pay, like, so... I, I remember crying once. Uh, so they had the webcams Not outside. Jealous. What's that? <laughs> yeah. No, go ahead. I was crying. I, 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 I had this moment where I helped someone and I wasn't asking for anything back. I was start, I was ask, answering long emails and questions and stuff like that on Tumblr. And she, PayPal just came out. She PayPaled me 20 bucks. <gasps> and it wasn't the 20 bucks, obviously. But I was like, so I had two feelings. One, I felt like, oh my God, someone just paid me for answering an email. Like I felt valuable. Yeah. I felt heard. It was yeah. it was from my Tumblr community, not from like psychology right. today, right? Right. And then two, I was like, oh my God, you can make money online. <laughs> and then so those two things kind of changed everything for me. So you you built your brand up as being sort of this blog, angry therapist, coach. Uh, you're, you also have a texting service where people yeah, that's can new. sign up. Right. Where um, you can get kind of coaching daily weekly? yeah i just send i send a daily text to um inspire to people yeah you know and uh and I, there's programming behind it so every it's like a it's like fitness programming where every week it kind of changes mm. the theme so maybe one week's codependency one week's whatever mm. um anxiety or yeah. panic attacks and then just kind of in a text because i just feel like that's the way we learn <laughs> well yeah <laughs> our phone. i'm just adapting to technology yeah, and yeah. you know before i think email was big but now no one looks at their email right it's like spam yeah so i think i turn it off but you look at your text yeah even if you pretend like you don't yeah you do. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. i'll reread so, text for yeah. no reason i'll just go scroll through but i think there's something to to like what they're doing now with the online therapy where even two years ago I would be like there's no yeah. fucking way I yeah. can never have a human connection with right, someone right. through my screen like meanwhile I'm literally like DMing and swiping and, yes. and liking like that's yes. how we form relationships whereas now you know I realized what I think I was missing with my therapists was the comfort of being in my own bed mm. in my pajamas with my M&Ms in my drawer that I could sneak sure. to whereas when I would go to someone's practice it was like Sure, it felt like I was finding a space for therapy and I could leave things in the room, but I also felt an uncomfortability, kind of right. a coldness, right. a bit of a distance, right. whereas now with these online therapy apps... Um, you can talk yeah. about your feelings and eat donuts. What do you think I'm doing right now? Why do I think <laughs> right. I invited you over right. here? Um, okay, so let's go a little bit so back. So it's all changing and it's all good. You're it's absolutely all, right. It's all good, right. and I think you're doing something swell with adapting or dying um, in the way that your practice is sort of um, a little bit digital, uh, which I feel like is very millennial. I just noticed your tattoo. Is that your birth chart? Yes, this is a birth chart that I cut into half because the, the circle would be too much. I also just got my birth chart tattoo. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, is that what that, that is? Yeah. Well, it's without the circle. I took the circle off of it oh, because I didn't nice. want to be contained. I like it. And my psychic was like, I think you did that on purpose because you're a free bird. Ugh. What's That's your sign? Cool. Uh, Aries. Okay. Horns, I'm Leo. Fire. What's your rising? I don't know. I don't know that oh, stuff. Okay. Uh, not important. Just yeah, good yeah. to know. Um, so moving on. So you become this wildly successful, unfiltered therapist who's like an anti therapist, right? You're, yeah. you're I don't know about wildly successful, but definitely. <laughs> so, 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 so I, I wasn't Iron Man, um, you know, dancing and all that stuff. I was mm. a, a guy in the basement doing the pull ups, <laughs> making those electric whips. I was okay. that guy. Okay, let yeah, me yeah, rephrase yeah. this wildly <laughs> successful to someone who thinks most therapists are, are, uh, unrelatable in, in that you kind of become sure. like an everyman's therapist. I was very kind of underground and like, mm. who's that weird Ooh. dude like riding a motorcycle? and doing you know like pull-ups <laughs> and talking about his feelings how's that yeah guy? because yeah. you were now deciding that you weren't going to have an office i've never had an office yeah I've, i just well first of all <laughs> i couldn't afford it because of grad school and all of that yeah. stuff um and uh i was like if we're going to do life let's 
if we're going to talk about life, let's do life while we're talking. Ooh. I thought that was interesting. So I started to see clients like uh, we went on a walk around Silver Lake. Wow. And she was like, oh, my God. This is amazing. Is it amazing. takes exactly 50 minutes, by the way, to get a, like, oh, there you a, go. a nice little a walk. perfect session. Yeah, it was perfect. And she was like, this is, um, I can't believe it. And, then, yeah. and I was like, oh, you liked it. She's like, yeah, like actually walk and talk, you know? Yeah. Um, it wasn't creepy or anything. I mean, you, you still have to have. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, you like that walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't sleep with my clients or anything like that. Um, there's actually in the back of a therapist magazine, I forget, but all the therapists that have lost their licenses. Whoa. And they stamp you back there. Yeah. I'm not in that. Thank God. Yet. No. We um, only have verified, validated, yeah. good people on this podcast. <laughs> I still have my license. I don't there know where go. it is, but I still have it. Um, <laughs> but then I started to bring people into CrossFit boxes and then a lot of coffee shops. Mm. And I've learned that clients actually don't mind a casual setting. Right. Yeah. So last week I met a couple in the park. And they Aww. were like, it was amazing. You do couples counseling? I do a lot of couples counseling. Okay, yeah. I was going to ask. Sorry, I'm eating while I'm doing this. I'm not sorry. You guys know me. Um, I was going to ask your thoughts on couples counseling. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how maybe meeting in a setting like the park makes things feel different? Yes. Um, there is something about going into a room and announcing that you and your <laughs> boyfriend or girlfriend is now seeing a couple's therapist. Yep. And there's something, and I think especially for men, like there's something about like, oh, it's almost like going to the principal's office. Yeah. You you guys are in trouble. Yeah. It's time to, to quote unquote work on yourself. For an hour? Right. Be angry. Right. And <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but meeting in a park, although you're technically doing the same thing on paper the feeling of it like we were outside at echo park where they had those swan boats mm, and beautiful kids and it's it so shady. nice yeah we just they they brought a blanket and we sat wow under it. it was just like casual conversation oh my god i want to do that they drove from san diego to do that holy yeah. shit yeah. i just started i haven't like announced this publicly and i don't know if i should without my partner but i don't care just started couples therapy oh nice yeah and it's been very interesting because the first thing i want to do after the session's over is facetime with my therapist <laughs> oh so you go to couples and then you go to you have individual and then you have couples i have individual Separate. and like well i don't necessarily always have individual right after couples therapy but i feel that's like my first feeling is like i don't want to i'm too nervous to take this energy anywhere mm. i feel like i need to call my therapist and like make awesome. sure i'm good and like i think it may be because it does have that feeling of being in a room that is like a principal's yeah, office a absolutely. little bit and it can absolutely. be the most comfortable like yeah. fucking uh crystals and like soft yeah, yeah, couches yeah, and it's shit but it's, it's not going into the building signing yeah. in like, yeah. is but you know what that being said i think it's important and valuable and i'm sure that it's mm. helping you know oh absolutely yeah, i wouldn't yeah. do it i don't do anything in my life i don't want to do okay. <laughs> i've that's, gotten to that's that awesome. point where i yeah. realized life is short but sweet for certain and to only do things and spend time with and especially when it comes to oh my god we could talk about the healthcare system and how expensive mm. fucking therapy is and oh, shit geez. i would that's a whole nother thing yeah yeah you're right. that's a whole nother episode but insurance and I yeah mean, no one can afford that dude it makes me anxious and depressed having to think about calling my insurance agent and that right. is not healthy like yeah. i don't feel taken care of i don't feel like they're looking out for my health and well-being Anyways, this is not that episode. Let's talk a little bit about masculinity. Yes. This is a podcast that mostly women or mm -hmm. people who identify as women listen to. Yes. But I've listened to you speak on other podcasts where you talk a lot about the fatherless America. Yes. What do you mean by that? Um, and, and, and I got to say, uh, when we talk about masculinity and definitions of man, mm -hmm. which is what miserable fuck is kind of about, it's not about me putting my definitions on any man. Mm. I just want to say that yeah. it's about encouraging other men to go on their man journey to find out their mm -hmm. own, like to create their own definitions that I are like hopefully the, new. The idea of a man journey. Uh, the, it never ends. <laughs> it never ends. Oh, well, that's good to yeah, know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it started with me when I was working in nonprofit, you know, making that 30 K. Um, wow, God bless you. And with the khakis. And, oh. and I remember, um, there was a lot of resistance because I was like, ah, oh, I got my master's. What am I doing here? But it was actually the most I've learned as far as, wow. as a therapist. Um, working in addiction, teenagers. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did. I remember LA. reading that. And I learned that the common thread, um, and I worked there for five years, so I probably treated, I mean, like literally thousands of kids and their, their wow. parents. No dad. So either dad was wow. gone mm -hmm. or dad was not present, meaning mm -hmm. he was at home, but he wasn't emotionally there. Yeah. And so the result of that I work with directly, which was um, women who stood too close, mm. uh, boys who either wanted to fight me or be me, mm. and then all of them struggling with either, um, well, all addictions, of course, but also 
um, low self esteem, mm. tons of anger, mm. uh, just just no self worth and value. Which is unique because they're being raised by women. Yes, and I think the women were busy just trying to fucking put food on the right. table and ma- make things work. Yeah, and so. I, and I don't think one's <laughs> more important than the other. Right, sure. But just the fact that we they just didn't have any positive male role model. Right. Yeah. And is it too stereotypical to think like all people without dads are going to be fucked up? And like, I can't think of, like every family has their shit, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like even if you had a good relationship with your dad, which like show me one person who <laughs> did, <laughs> but is it is it like, why is it different with men than women? mm I think because the role that the father plays is different from um, from from men and women. And even you know? now with like gay dads, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me wipe my face. Um, you brought the donuts. This I did. Is your no, fault. I love it. I still love the idea. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think I don't. I think it's it's different uh, depending on the individual, um, what happened, how they're wired. I mean, there's so many factors, um, but. The fact that of uh, no dad in the in the picture, whether emotionally gone or physically, mm. uh, there's no way that's not going to impact the family unit right. and the child in some way. Right. You know what I'm saying? Totally. They get very thirsty if if dad's not around. They start to find that in someone else, mm-hmm. and if that someone else is unhealthy, mm-hmm. if he's the guy outside the high school mm-hmm. driving the Trans Am that mm-hmm. shouldn't be there, mm-hmm. right? Or if he's like, don't a, get in that guy's van. Yeah. Or <laughs> <laughs> or if he's like a, a you know whatever. Just Macho. alpha, whatever, yeah, 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 that we find in locker Community rooms. Community figure, yeah. Yes, or the druggie or whatever. Um, that's how we start to go down the, the wrong path. Right. I think it was Brene Brown who said with oh, addiction. Yeah, she's great. She said um, the gene loads the gun and then the environment pulls the trigger. That's really interesting too because yes. I feel like we, we talk about like how do we break this chain of toxic masculinity. And I think – there's a million ways, right? It can yeah. start out on a on a, a very personal, like um, micro level. Like, who are the guys that are the popular guys in high school? Sure, who sure. are uh, the guys that are, um, you know, that that the football stars? Like, very stereotypical, like American movie, which is what I grew up in, like right. a southern town yeah, where football is yeah. king and that kind of thing, and girls do cheerleading. Guys, you know, now we know gender is a spectrum, blah, blah, blah. but there's also this idea of like. Who are our celebrities? How are like our yeah. men presenting themselves? And now we are luckily the generation below us, I think, is getting so smart. Like they are understanding that men can cry and, and show their feelings. Yeah. And then we've got motherfuckers like Timothy Chalamet and Harry Styles yeah. versus, you know, the Brad Pitts and the rocks right, right. Of, of generation above us. Right. Um, do you find that having this generation behind us is this might be a, a, a confusing question, so let me try and get my thoughts out properly. Do you find that our force meeting sort of this old school Donald Trump era mm. of men mm-hmm. is creating more friction than good? Like, are we seeing toxic masculinity spike or are we seeing, is it sort of environmental? Is it like the, the metropolis cities that we're relying on to bring in all the soft boys? Like, I is think, it worse or better? I think the, the, the good that has come from um, caricatures like Donald Trump mm-hmm. and that portrayal of, of a man is really good because it shows you the contrast. Mm. And once you see the contrast, you're like, oh, okay, now I'm, I have a more clear definition of where I want to go and who yeah. I want to be. Um, if all you saw were amazing men, <laughs> there's a chance you might think you're not amazing. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? To- like women. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. But if you start to see, whether it's political, movie stars or whatever, mm-hmm. um, people you don't want to be, you might start looking inward or looking or getting more picky and having mm-hmm. some non-negotiables and deciding, oh, I actually want don't want to be any of these people, but mm-hmm. I want to be... It's like a rebelling. Yeah. So I think the contrast is important. So uh, again, like we live in Los Angeles. We kind of live in a bubble where we're seeing these Timothy Chalamet's and Harry Styles type men. But when I go home for, you know, Thanksgiving or the holidays back to Florida and I go back to my high school where, (laughs) you know, I'll give like a talk about the industry and I see these kids that I just want to shake, you know, talking to our audience specifically, like maybe they're in the high school or college age. What are some things that you can do on a uh, 
pubescent level maybe God. i can say like yeah. those are the worst fucking people it's 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 also <laughs> wait, it's also the the most difficult for them because at that age we're just sponges yeah we don't you know, know what the we have so many emotions we don't know who yeah we i mean are. to tell a 15 year old to not seek approval and validation is almost oh, impossible. like how do you do that you don't you know but if you're 40 yeah yeah that's different you so know? is it just about like changing like classes in high school to like favor self we're, like, how I, do we actually I, I do this? I think it takes uh, leaders, teachers, mm -hmm. um, influencers, mm -hmm. other people to kind of create because the kids are absorbing constantly. Mm -hmm. So right mm -hmm. now they're absorbing social media, podcasting, right. things like this. Yeah. So it's a great door into mm -hmm. injecting new definitions. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully that will give them to start having some conversations with themselves. Yeah. And then the mm -hmm. courage to be different. So it's still kind of our generation's job. I, I, yeah, I think it's every generation's job forever. That's, okay, yeah. fair point. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, we still have stake in this game. Like, no, it's well, I not think just it, the generation I, I think what's I, well, I think what's exciting now is there's actually, I, uh, honestly, I think there's actually a, a, a chance at change. Mm. So, like, if we were in the 50s, it would be Fucking, like, don't even, yeah, 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 don't even bother. Yeah, it's that whole Norman yeah. Rockwell painting yeah. and the shoulds. Um, <laughs> but now I think, um, and it's not just, just the, the masculinity, just everything like wellness and mm -hmm. fitness mm -hmm. and, you know, meditation right, and right. power, just words like vulnerability and mm -hmm. gratitude. Like it's now people, <laughs> yeah, people are talking about it. And Our so fucking Christmas picture this year says gratitude on it. <laughs> I just had to share that. I was like, mom. Get, get out of here. Stop. Did she send it to you? She sent me oh. a, a copy of it. And she oh. was like, here's our Christmas card this year. It says gratitude. You're saying that because it it, it, it sounds false. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah, like, yeah, mom, yeah. no okay. one's going to believe a fuck right. that we have right. gratitude. <laughs> well, that's the other thing about wellness is, um, one, it's great because it's commercializing. Yeah. But it's, it's commercializing. It's forming a crust. Yeah. So there's a lot of people wearing the t-shirt. Mm. And so. Okay. So do you feel that way about toxic masculinity? Like, you know, we're sure. getting, we're getting, I mean, like, sure. I don't want to speak for my partner when he's not here, but I do all the time. So fuck it. It's my own podcast. I do what I want. But he grew up in a very toxic masculine mm. Boston, yep. toughen up guy. Yeah, yeah. Like he would joke about how he only ever slept with women for other dudes. Like he only wow. had sex so that right. he could go back to his friends and it the fucked points. him up yeah, where it yeah, was yeah. like, Oh, now do I know what is intimacy even really right, is? Right. So it was about the scoreboard. Yeah. Right. It was about the scoreboard. So, so I forgot where I was going this, with this question. Maybe it was just like how, oh, that's what it was, is is we have these men who are like our age, our generation, who, has, who have gone, wow, I was a shitty teen. Like maybe I, I used the F word mm -hmm. against like uh, the LGBT community or like, you know, I used to say things were gay back mm -hmm. in the day. Sure, and it was too. like, now I'm like, oh, the worst thing you can be. Yeah, yeah. That's the worst yeah. thing you could throw at someone. Like, right. So do we, how do you, how does someone that maybe, maybe someone who's listening to this podcast, maybe their boyfriend or their husband or their partner used to be one of those people. How do we forgive and forget? How do we move forward? How do we give men the space to grow into better men? God, I would say, um, non-judgment. Mm. So can't every, relate. Explain. E everyone, <laughs> has, everyone has their story and mm. their journey and their definitions um, based on their experiences, but also their upbringing, right? Mm -hmm. You growing up mm -hmm. in, in a, South, I'm assuming a red cross. state yeah, oh yeah. is going to be very different than me mm -hmm. growing up in Los Angeles, right, right. right? You going to football games mm -hmm. and me stealing car stereos and skating <laughs> and shit. So um, we all have our stories, yeah. right? So I think judgment, and this is the other thing that's happening today that I think is dangerous, is there's more separation than ever. Mm. So uh, judgment becomes a crowbar. Yep. You know? cancel culture. Bye. Right. So it's uh, understanding someone's story and where they're at and not judging them, mm -hmm. but leading by example. Mm. So instead of coming at people, come with them Ooh. by doing your thing, whatever Love your thing that. is. Because then they'll see something in you. Yeah. Because if you tell someone to, to, to if I said to, to someone like your boyfriend, mm -hmm. this is what a man looks like. Mm hmm he would be like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck <laughs> yeah. you. And I would be the same way, right? Yeah. Um, but if I said this was my story and this is how I'm living my mm. life and whatever, take what you want or not, right. um, he'll be more curious. You know how you go to feed a pigeon and if you feed a pigeon with Often. an open hand? Yeah, I do it every day. <laughs> uh, they, they, this way, right? Yeah. But if you're running at them, they're, you'll never... They're like, what the fuck? Right. Oh, and wow. And there's a you lot of people... that as a good metaphor. Don't use my shit. <laughs> I, there's a lot of people today um, pigeon, coming after pigeons. pigeons, going after wow. pigeons, trying yeah. to feed them instead oh. of the, the open Shoving hand. it down their throats. Yes, yes. Yeah. That, there's a lot of com people coming at yeah. people, especially with the internet. Yeah. And just 
all the noise so quick to just write people off and not give people space to grow um i'm curious how you would give any advice for men that are in a group of friends where someone calls a girl a hot piece of ass or a slut Mm. or you know how do you even begin to encroach on the interweavings of that masculine circle because bro friendships are fucking crazy yeah like i think yeah, we we tend yeah. to like in media and movies dumb them down it's like oh bro 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 yeah. but like they're fucking crazy like if you get ostracized from your group as a man it's like losing your Id- entire sure. identity uh, absolutely or it's, it's toughen up and get over especially it especially if you did you grew up without a dad and Ooh. so they become your tribe yeah yeah um, I forgot who said this. They, they, God, someone said that um, teenage boys are more dangerous together than any man because Whoa. they will do anything. Yeah. Because they to to uh, invincible eat, invincible or they don't want to be um, looked up down upon or be the one that's kind of shunned out of the group. Oh, if I see a group of teens walking down the street, yeah. I'll cross the other side. Right. I'm terrified exactly. of that. Exactly. Um, and that's because, again, they're sponges mm-hmm. and they're not, wi- they're willing to exchange their truth for membership. Damn, you know? truth for membership. Yeah. And so, me, it wasn't until my divorce, and that was the one, and I talk about that all the time. That's one of the first things that actually made me realize, oh, I'm a child. Ooh. Is that I, that's what I was doing, exchanging my truth. For membership wow. constantly. So how do you get your truth back, girl? Well, you gotta first you gotta first um kind of like know what your truth is and your truth. How changes. the fuck does anyone know that? I think I think it changes, you know. Mm. Um, but being just being really honest with yourself, and then uh, of course you know truth is a very generic w- word. So sure. depending on what feels real to you, yeah. Um, and then holding on to that and not allowing yourself to give that away in exchange mm. for whatever approval validation mm. i don't know sex money whatever it is the mm. anything external right so do you think it's i wouldn't say do you think it's easy to stand up in a group of dude friends or do you think no do you it's think hard it's like brave it's like, hard i struggle with it today really? you know because i have different like tribes you're a of therapist group you're supposed to be perfect no i'm not perfect at all <laughs> you're supposed to know all the answers no, to I, socializing I, I, <laughs> <laughs> um i have my uh like my my athlete friends uh-huh. that are all ripped and shredded yeah. and very manly. Crossfit bros. And, well, yeah, right. Yeah. Motorcycles with them, and then I have my kind of sensitive friends that mm. I could go and uh, these are older guys that I eat crepes mm. with, Aww, and we talk cute. about our feelings. So I have different types of kind yeah. of men, you know, okay. and some that overlap. But yeah, it's really hard to go into um, the locker room and with the athletes mm-hmm. and try to be sensitive or vulnerable because the first thing they'll do is make fun of you, right. and the reason they're going to make fun of you isn't coming from a bad place. It's so they could connect. But you're also mm. challenging their definition. Right. Right? And they don't like to be challenged. They don't like to be challenged. Right. And so instead of looking inward, they're going to hold up a mirror or, yeah. be, you know. And I also allow it. So I'm taking responsibility Because <laughs> you're that. like, I'm tough. I'm the angry therapist. Um, <laughs> I think it's interesting what you just said about holding up a mirror. Because my partner always says something about like who your friends are like a reflection of yourself. And so like if he ever found himself in a space with some bros who were shitting on women, like literally five feet away from them and I'd be like elbowing them under the table, Mm. it was easy for him because now he's 30 and he has his own brain. Right. I don't know if you think that this is something that comes with age, but like, for instance, you don't really have your own space to think, right? Like you don't have your own space to be like, Oh, religion's actually a sham. Sorry for anyone out there. But like, I had to be so far removed and go through so many life experiences to be able to say like the church shaped so much of my thinking. Now I'm able to see that clearly. Do you think that like mask, masculinity toxic masculinity can only be broken with age or experience i wouldn't say only but i think age is a factor um i think men generally start turning the corner around 30 Mm. they start to ask different questions Mm -hmm. um and and you know you're not going to be 21 asking i mean you might be but usually like 21 you're not like i should use a you just want to get yeah (laughs) 21 you're just trying to get laid and and, and be accepted And you're out trying to like yeah hustle YOLO and, right you want you want stories still you want stories yeah. yeah thirty you start asking hmm I wonder you know if I did this differently I wonder if I started to respond instead of react what would that look like Ooh, I love that I wonder why I'm falling into these patterns I want like all that stuff mm. and also your definitions of love starts to change no yeah your how about yours yeah oh hundred percent yeah you yes. value things that are just not. Only pussy, I'm assuming. <laughs> now I want pussy and the, the, the tits and the ass. Hell yeah. Before it was just the pussy. No, no. no. And now, now it's I want the whole three. package now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it changed for me. So there's a couple things that changed. One is 
I believe less in the lightning in the bottle okay. and more in the slow burn. And this oh. is something I've learned just recently in a couple of years. Sure. Um, I used to think that the lightning, the whole like see someone across yeah. the room, like <gasps> that was love and yeah. intensity. And mm-hmm. I think that is most of the time dysfunction. Right. That's like the addict Al-Anon. Oh, yeah, or, sure. Or, you know, codependency, sure. measurement, all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that being said, we have to have chemistry. I'm not yeah. saying to like just start no, dating your friends. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> You're like, I'm bored. Great. <laughs> yes. And also, um, I care less about, uh, how do I explain this? I think you have to swim past the breakers to Ooh, build something real and sustainable. That's an interesting. Most people don't. Don't. I never. I, I was. I. I had fairy tale imagery yeah, in my course. brain, and it movies. Com- yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I love. Yeah, yeah. And it, I did a podcast with Terry Warren, who was like, she's dubbed the godmother of herpes. Like mm-hmm. she uh, mm. pioneered herpes research, and she said something that like fucking blew my mind. She was like, "It's harder to find a good person than." Wait, now I'm going to fuck up her quote. Basically, like, oh, look yes. past the... Yeah. <laughs> good person versus... Like, yeah, like, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. if you find Abs. a good person who has herpes, I implore you to look beyond the herpes because oh, it's harder to yeah. find a decent person that you connect with and sure, like. And it was sure. like, oh, you see all these red flags, whether right. it be like you don't like the way they dress or like maybe um, their views aren't as 2019 as you'd like them to be, but you do have to look past those breakers. Is that like what you so, were saying? Yeah, like, you know how the the break, the short break is very yeah. choppy? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. If you swim past that, there's calm. Yeah. That's what I mean by the breakers. Um, I think that we have a very low tolerance of staying in something if they're not going according to plan mm. or what we think or, yep. you know, a lot of, and, and if you don't have two people looking inward mm-hmm. and growing together, mm-hmm. you're not swimming past the breakers. And I, so you're, you're yeah. repeating patterns basically. Yeah. And I, I've said this a million times on this podcast. It's like, you should never need someone. You should want someone like it should be like a compliment like truffle butter added to your steak you're like i'm already a delicious juicy meaty steak i'm beautiful and like 45 (laughs) dollars. but also when i'm with my partner it's like i got truffle butter on me too it's like you you have to be two whole complete people i mean do you believe in the whole you gotta love yourself before you can love someone else thing well i i i don't like that because that that says that there's like a an end to loving yourself and then you can love someone else (gasps) loving yourself is the rest of your life. There's the quote. And there are days you're going to love yourself and there are days... You're going to fucking hate hell yourself. Hell yeah, absolutely. Most absolutely. days absolutely. for me. <laughs> so it's a, it's an ebb and flow. It's a dance. Yeah. And for someone to say, okay, wait, I got it. Now I love myself. Now I'm ready. Yeah. It's like, no, it's not a light switch it's like that. It's very exclusive because then yeah. that's to say that like yeah. you can't have those bad days. You can't have depression. Yeah. You can't have one leg. Right. You can't have, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's very exclusive. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, mm-hmm. I heard something that you talked about and I tried to explain it to my boyfriend this morning. I was like, I sent him your Dax Shepard interview, which I'll link below, but I thought it was so brilliant, mm-hmm. wonderful. And I was like, just skip to this part because I want you to explain it where you talk about Oh, I'm going to fuck this up right to your face. It's like <laughs> things that happen to you, for you, through oh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And can you just say that? Yes. Um, I <laughs> Go. <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, a friend slash business partner told me this, and I really, it just hit me. It landed for me. There's these four stages. There's uh, to me, mm-hmm. by me, for mm-hmm. me, and through me. Ooh. So to me is victim mode. He dumped me. It's, it's that whole creating your prison because you are playing the victim. Mm-hmm. And that's a mindset. So it's, it's with everything. So if you're a very to me person, you're not only like that in relationships, but you're probably like that with business. Right. And with all, right? Um, that's the most powerless stage because Ooh. basically you, you have no power. You're yeah. a victim, right? Uh, buy me is all ego. It's my way or the highway. Uh-oh. And it's short-lived, right? That's so me. Um, <laughs> buy me doesn't last, especially in relationships. Shit. Um, no, I'm good now. I'm good now. <laughs> and then you're not by me. No, um, thanks. For me is when you get to a place where you actually believe you deserve something. <gasps> like you deserve these donuts. I do. Or whatever it is. Um, that beautiful Christmas tree. That's true. Thank yes. you. It's from the dollar store. It's only $27. <laughs> I think it's gorgeous. Thank I love you. It. Um, I love that, by the way. It's, it's not some tiny little, no. but it's like a really big tree. Yeah, nice. yeah, thank you. Did you see the disco star at the top? Look no. at the ceiling. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Wow, That's very right? LA. I'll put that it. in the bio, too, because people were it. asking me about that on it. Instagram. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we got for me. So for me is me. a place yeah. of worth, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Finding into a place that you actually deserve something healthy, like a relationship. And then through me is the most power-filled state 
stage and that's when you believe that you are a conduit and there's oh. something working through you wow. it's when you hit flow states and you probably um as a comedian mm -hmm. as just being mm -hmm. super mm -hmm. present mm -hmm. um you have a lot of through me kind of moments. Yeah. Right? Serendipity and yep. like mm -hmm. meeting people Bro, and all of uh, that. What's it called? Synchronicity. Synchronicity. All the time. Kind of getting out of your own way, out of your yep. own head. Mm -hmm. Um, that, and so is, is that the goal or do we kind of ebb and flow or do we I think we ebb and flow mm. and you can you could you could go macro with it like well in my 20s I was two me like in all you know 30s or you could just be like this week <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. and I think uh the goal would be to try to stay more in a for me and through me Ooh. instead of a to me and by me What if you are dating someone that's a to me for me Ra rather than the other two good ones yeah so i think you have to see if that person is on their journey to oh, going there yeah. because then it's it's there's hope or they're just having a bad week right like yeah you said, exactly it could be right, a bad right, week. right 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 yeah. uh, but if they are stuck in a to me by me so if they're a very iron fist or mm -hmm. you know look what you did to me uh constantly that's mm -hmm. their pattern they're gonna stunt your growth yeah you know then you might want to reconsider if the uh, abs and ass is worth <laughs> like the the right, eq the and, and other things that it takes <laughs> right um i i just think it takes it takes so much if you think about it, it takes so much to build a relationship yeah. You know? Shit. It's yeah. not like it just happens and then like the honeymoon stage and then you're just a perfect fit. It's every single day choosing. Well, also that today person. with uh, swiping and the whole mm -hmm. dating landscape mm -hmm. and how people are hiding behind. Oh my God, it's crazy. You talk about dating being dead. Yeah, yeah. I wrote something and it went viral because not because I'm a talented writer, but I think because. You <laughs> thank you, but because um, it hit a nerve. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, what what is dating today? You swipe. Uh -huh. pictures are mostly probably not real mm -hmm. it, and, and i did it for a while single i like i remember <laughs> once i swiped on like a, a drew barrymore and drew carey showed up like, oh. i was like <laughs> dude this is so unfair yeah and being a gentleman i actually paid for dinner i hung out i made her laugh but i knew when she showed up that it was false mm -hmm. advertising mm -hmm. um and i always ask people like if you're gonna put up profile pics and all that wouldn't you want your your date if to be pleasantly surprised instead yeah, of like show the ugliest of you well i mean maybe not the ugliest but just well, real pictures yeah. right yeah like a mixture a show mixture. you face tuned at a red carpet and then like your double chin in bed with a box of donuts <laughs> yeah exactly give the variety it's right, a spicy right, life. right yeah but um, it's disgusting like dating that, you meet up for five minutes for a drink yeah and it feels very kind of um we're just condiments now mm -hmm. and then there's this thing called ghosting mm -hmm. where people just don't that shit's like i think it's so cowardly well it, it 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 we were all we were all about this honesty age about being no filter and upfront about our yep, feelings yep. and then we got lazy and we're like oh now I just don't have to complete it. Well, we also believe uh that we have um a lot of choices which yep, we kind of do options, uh, that's fine yeah. but maybe we're in LA we have infinite options. If you're in like fucking Yes, um, yes, true, St. but Louis. like <laughs> just in general I think te technology has given us a lot of um, looking over the fence, thinking mm. the grass is greener, mm -hmm. and it's all there's images, they're yeah. photo, they're photoshopped, and they're yeah. filtered, and that's why um, less people are getting married. Yeah, and I think uh, it prevents us from doing the real work on our own selves and our relationships. Ooh, that was a good little tidbit to end oh, on. Thank you. I love do it. Do you're the work on yourself, and you can do work <laughs> with John Kim, the angry therapist. Where can everyone find you? Because I, I highly suggest you at least go check out his Instagram because oh, I love thanks. reading your little quotes. Yeah, that's the angry therapist, wherever. Uh, dot com or on Instagram. And your book, I Used to Be a Miserable Fuck. Are you coming out with a new one? Did yeah. you say recently? Yeah, I just, I just sold another one called <gasps> Excuse me, Single Success? on Purpose. Single on Purpose? Yeah. That's really fun. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it's gonna be great I'm putting that out in the universe uh, Confidence don't forget you can rate this on iTunes you can tweet us at confidentlypod you can DM us um, I would love to get your book and do a giveaway that's what I'm gonna do oh, I'm gonna for do sure. a giveaway yeah let me know for everyone that follow well <laughs> don't worry I'm gonna buy it I didn't just like put you on blast like no, no, I got, I got give me you. free stuff um, I, I could definitely only donate only because books. I definitely have no. some people in my life that need to read no, their no, stuff no, I got that books happen yeah, to yeah, be yeah. 
man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to put you on black. She's like, like John, I'm going to give away your car. I just, the car that we're going to give that away. It's give like, me right. your work. Uh, give me your labors. I will pass it for free. But uh, I would love to do a giveaway with you. Yes. So make sure you're following us on Confidently Pod. Stay tuned for that. Also, if you want to be a we life coach and you're to. curious, um, go to journey.co. Oh, yeah. yeah your and, and life we'll, coaching stuff. Yeah. We, I have a whole school that will um, answer questions and train you to certify you as a life coach if you want to help people. I'm not there yet. I could totally Five see years. You. I could. I could Five. tell you. Okay, maybe three. like three. Yeah, I'm going to be old soon. I think now, but anyway. That's really cool. I don't think I've ever heard of something like that. Yeah. Good I mean, for you. Yeah. I just love him. Okay, thank you, Confidants. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.